that leads up to the moment that almost made me cry this morning. You know, you hear people talk about it with fishing. It's always the one that got away. I had my pre-record, and that eagle flew off when that boat went by, but I wasn't in slow-mo. There's always something. I'm, I'm going to have to break my piggy bank in order to do it, because it's kind of spendy, right. but it'll be fun. I'm going to sell a vehicle when we get back. <laughs> now we're going to have to really search. Pick our shots. Pick our pick shots, our, yeah. do a little research, talk to the locals. There are eagles everywhere. I mean, if you think about, if you put it in the perspective of Wyoming or Colorado, I mean, you might see four or five a day, but, the, you know, you might cover 90 miles to do that. Right. You know, even more sometimes the year, but there is a very high density here um, of the eagle population. And that's winter and summer. I mean, right. I think I've been here in the summer several times, and you I don't think you see as many eagles as we're seeing now this time of year, but in the summer you probably see. So I would say if we're seeing 50 now, we'll probably see 25 in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So you still are going to see eagles in the, even in the summertime, which at higher densities that you would than you would find anywhere else. Right, which, yeah, which makes it a, you know, makes it the place to be. Now, that being said, we've been on land the last couple of days and it's a little bit different story it's a little bit tougher to find an image uh, we did find yesterday morning uh, we did find a, an immature bald eagle that was kind of perched on this point overlooking the ocean overlooking the inlet and so initially we stopped to look at him and then it turned out there was a mature bird that was right behind him and so it turned into a pretty good opportunity. It wasn't, you know, I did get some good stills, good portraits, uh, but it wasn't as good of a still shot or still portrait because of the background as it was for video. And I think you, you know, given your eye for for the video that you've done in the past, I think that's what you saw and decided let's let's go ahead and spend some time on this. And we had to spend some time because... These eagles were sitting, I don't even know how to describe it. One was sitting on a root ball, the mature. The immature was sitting basically on the ground in the grass. But they're sitting on a high point, so they're overlooking the ocean. And when you get out, you know, you park a distance away so you don't bump the eagles. And then you basically just shoot from the car where you're at so that there's that period of time where you want the animal or whatever it is, in this case, the eagle, to get used to our presence. Now, these eagles here are super used to people because there's activity everywhere. Right. There's yeah. boats, there's fishermen, there's tourists, there's, you name it, it's going on. So it's not like some areas, well, like in Colorado, I know a lot of people would, out at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal, there would be eagles. And man, you even got close and that eagle's going to take off out of the tree and leave right. here that's not the situation but you still need to you can, it's not like you can jump out of the car and run right up to that eagle and get your right. shot so we got out and uh basically just shot from the car which was i don't know how far was that it's probably it was 50 probably yards 50 yards at least yeah and you know as mike just alluded to there's they're not just used to people but there's a, a road that goes right by where these birds were sitting there's a walking path that goes right by the where these birds are sitting there's a lot of activity they've chosen to put themselves there um and, and that's what made it a good opportunity aside from you know just where they were at i think that's why homer is good in general for the eagles is they are accustomed to people accustomed right. to activity so uh we started out with that 50 yards, but the process is, is we spent an hour and a half and you might move up 10 feet. Yeah. And then you try to recompose a new shot, either zoom in, zoom out, wide, tight, whatever you're going to do and get that next shot and, and just be a little bit closer, but not move up so much that you're going to make the birds nervous. And it's really just a matter of watching behavior, right? You just watch those eagles do what they do. And if they're turning their head really fast or if they're fidgety, you've gone too far. So you really, it's just that 
it's that whole animal behavior thing that you're constantly watching just to make sure that that there's no sense of urgency. So slow, slow moving. And we would leapfrog yeah. it. So I would set up and I would start shooting. And I was doing all video yesterday. I would start shooting. And then while when I had a shot and I was actually filming, then it was your chance to move forward. That way where somebody's always shooting something. Right. Then you got to move forward. And then we'd both shoot there for what? 5, 10, 15 minutes maybe. Yep. And then, then I would take another 10 steps forward. And we did this for an hour and a half, and we ended up getting... The immature ended up flying off because a car drove by. But we still had that mature bird there. And I wonder, I was thinking about that. I wonder if those immature birds are just... They just don't have enough years, and so they get it's nervous with just not, about whatever. Yeah, not relaxed. And yeah. Just like a teenager. Exactly. Always fidgety. Yep. Because when you get to that, the immature eagle, there was no, that bird was fine. He was just, or he or she, whatever, yeah. was totally fine with our presence. Relaxed and doing what it was doing when we before we got there. So, And it's cool to to have all this time, too, because then you get to watch what they're doing, right? And you, I, I always wonder what's going through this mind of this eagle. As, you know, he's just sitting there, he or she's just sitting there passing the time but every now and then it's like a i don't know something on the ground will catch their eye now this mature eagle was sitting on a root ball so he's probably two two feet off the ground okay. but every now and then it looked straight down and like it was i don't think there's many bugs out now because it's still too cold but something would catch his eye and that's kind of a cool behavior kind of snap. thing too yeah, yeah they'd be looking down looking around so we did that for another hour and we ended up getting what 20 yards away, finally. Yeah, I think, you know, you had wanted to get some footage up close of the, uh, not necessarily up close, but you wanted to get to the point where you could get a headshot and get some slow motion video of just a headshot. And this bird was so relaxed that it, it made for that possibility. It was hard, though. I mean, I've got a lot of reach with that 2 to 400, with the right. 1 4, and then. The camera I'm using is 8K, but it'll shoot at 4K, which mm -hmm. gives you more multipliers. But even at 4K, with the 1.4 and the 400, I was still, I didn't get the shot that I wanted. I think I need to be 10 yards away. But I wasn't willing to push that. I knew right. if I got 10 yards away, that bird was going to fly. Yeah. And it just isn't worth it. So I just basically went with what I got. So I ended up with a crop that was about the middle of the body. And then left some headspace, and and it, it's good shot. It's it's nice for sure. And if we're gonna edit something, I shot it in four K. So if we're gonna edit something, we're gonna probably play it back in two K. So that means I could crop in in the edit another two K or half half of it, and then you're gonna get to that shot that I wanted anyway. So mm. the cool thing about what I was doing too is you want that movement, you want a little action, you want something going on. And with video, it's difficult. With stills, you can just push the button whenever you want to. With video, you either roll the whole time or you try to predict a movement. And it's super hard to do. You just mm -hmm. never know when something's going to happen. So I ended up uh, using that pre-record feature that's on my camera. So I have it set at 12 seconds. So as long as the camera's on and I've pushed pre-record, my camera will record everything. And then if that eagle does something that's cool whether it's looking down at the ground or looking at its feet or looking at it at another eagle or singing or whatever it's doing i can hit the button and then i got the last 12 seconds which is kind of cool that saves yeah. your saves a lot of hard drive space is what that does yeah and this was this was the first time that i've really tested my camera out with video i mean i have i have a good dslr nikon d850 it's got fantastic image quality, got a large sensor, um, but I've never done video with it. I've always done video with just my camcorder. And so this was a good opportunity to test that out. Uh, test. I didn't really test out the autofocus abilities, um, and I've heard that's where the, uh, the Achilles heel is with this camera and video, because that eagle was always in the same focal plane, so there was no reason to to be too concerned about, you know, testing out the autofocus. Mm -hmm. So 
I have to say, you know, I had to I had to go down to 1080p. Couldn't shoot. It does shoot at 4K, but it won't shoot slow motion at 4K. It was also the first time that I've played with slow motion video. Um, aside from just on my kind of high end pro end camcorder, and I have to say that the the images that that I got, I was pretty happy with. You're hooked. I am. He made a comment this morning. He's yeah. like, oh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to start shooting more video. I did. I said, you know, you screwed me, <laughs> because I was perfectly content to uh, to shoot stills and just you know get those moments that that occur while you're out in the field. But now I'm completely screwed. I'm gonna be out there twice as long, and I'm gonna be frustrated because there's so much to learn on this end of things as well. Although there are a lot of carryovers, um, there is a lot to learn. Yeah, and I think the carrier carryovers are all composition, exposure, all that kind of stuff is the same as what you're doing with the steel. And the composition of something that is stationary is very similar to what, how we would shoot a steel. What the difficult things are is, okay, we need composition when they're moving. And then it's not just one and done. Now, all of a sudden, you've got this really cool bit of video, but what do you do with that? I mean, right. yeah, you could use that for Instagram as a one-off, and that's fine. But if you're going to build a story, now you need 50 of those shots, 50 different birds or 50 different uh, compositions, 50 different things to tell that story about that animal. So it is so much more involved when you're shooting video. It's mm -hmm. just you start thinking about that way. And then I also think about it for stock you know and a lot of the things that we're doing that's my first mindset is like okay these tv channels that are doing shows on alaska they always need eagle footage if i can get something in 4k that's a little different that one-off is going to work because i could sell that footage to a network um but if we're going to use it ourselves for instagram that one-off will work with that too but then if you're going to come back and produce a little story about, say, our trip here, we want every little situation shot in video. So it's so much more involved because you can't just say one and done. You need 50 or 100 different shots to tell a story. And I think you ran into that last night. I went to bed and you were up editing your video for, what, at least another hour. Yeah. Just because, to try to put something together. Yeah, just trying to find those like you said, those little behaviors, those little head twitches, head turns, the blink of the eye, um, all those little elements that people don't get to see, that's what is going to make good video. So trying to put together a little bit more of the story with just a bird in one spot. You know, there, there still is a story to be told, although it's a little bit more brief. And it, it doesn't give a complete picture, but it does give people more than what they're going to see from their, you know, their vehicle, that type of thing. Well, and I think you can look at that. So, yeah, you can definitely tell a story from that one encounter, right? So you, mm -hmm. but the way you do that is you have wide shots, you have tight shots, you have an immature bird, you have a mature bird, you have right. uh, eagle looking to the right, eagle looking to the left, an eagle preening, an eagle shaking its feathers off. It's all these little elements that, yeah, in, in, I mean, it's not going to be a big, long story, but it will certainly be a story that would encapsulate that encounter, which is kind of cool. And in today's right. world, that's that's the attention span of most people. So if you can get out there and get 20, 30 good shots, you could do a really awesome little video for Facebook or Instagram or something mm -hmm. that encapsulates that experience. Yeah. And it, you know, it bit us, bit me in the butt this morning, which we'll get to. <laughs> but yeah, it, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And to be quite honest, and we've talked about this before, uh, some of these opportunities that we videoed are not places that I would want a still. I mean, like I said, that that bird I got a couple great portraits of, but the the video does add a whole other dimension. And and that was the bird that we had the opportunity with. It really wasn't. We had looked around really wasn't anything else that um, was around other than things, birds that were on man-made structures, which, you know, we'll talk about that as well. But this bird was on an, that root ball 
which had washed up as driftwood, you know, obviously got washed up in a storm somewhere, exposed all the roots. That root ball ended up up on the top of this bank. And it makes for an interesting perch mm -hmm. for video and um, and stills, actually. Yeah, I think if both of us were shooting stills, we'd have probably been, we could have spent 20 minutes and been out of there. Easily, yeah. And that would have been taking our time. Could have been done in five minutes if to get the shot. Because we're not going to push the bird. We're not going to bump the bird. We're not going to make him fly just so we can get a flight shot. We're just going to shoot that portrait and be done. With video, now you're a whole different mindset. And it's like, okay, how can I tell a story about this particular bird? And now I've got movement. So he happened to be sitting on that root ball, which was next to grass. The wind was blowing, so you'd see feathers ruffled up from the wind. You would see the grass blowing a little bit on the sides. So you can use that to tell that story. Hey, it's a little bit breezy. And then all these different elements. You gotta be thinking about all that when you're out there shooting to make sure you have enough to tell all the elements of that story that you experienced. Mm -hmm.